In a previous video, I showed you guys how to eliminate the auto bed leveling feature on a printer and switch over to a traditional Z end stop. And I used my ANET ET5X printer for that demonstration and I created an adjustable Z end stop for that printer and it seemed to be quite a popular modification. And so I also have this ANET A8 Plus printer here that does not have auto bed leveling, but it also has just a regular fixed Z end stop and that makes adjusting your Z offset very difficult. So I went ahead and designed a very similar adjustable Z end stop for this printer. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys that design and how to install it on the ANET A8 Plus. And so the first thing we're gonna do is take a quick look at the 3D model. And these are the parts that you will need to print. And so there's the main body in dark gray. There is the green part, which I like to call the bumper. And this is where the limit switch gets mounted to. And then there's the bluish purple part, which is the adjustment knob which controls the height of that bumper. The two holes on the main body are used in combination with T-nuts to mount this part to the aluminum extrusions. And the smaller two holes on the back of that bumper, that's where the limit switch will go from your ANET printer. So we're gonna be reusing that part. And if you've seen my video with the ET5X adjustable end stop, this design should look pretty recognizable and familiar to you because it is very much the same approach, but I'm still gonna take you guys through the assembly next. The first step in the assembly is to press in one of these brass threaded inserts. This is a metric M3 insert since we're gonna be using an M3 socket head cap screw in the adjustment knob. Now I've built myself a custom heat set press here specifically for pressing these kinds of inserts into 3D printed parts. And you can see how I did that by following the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, if you don't do a lot of this sort of thing, you can just press it in with a regular soldering iron and a regular soldering iron tip. But if you do a lot of 3D printing and you plan on doing a lot of heat set press inserts for your parts, then you might want to consider building one of these things. It really helps you install these things quickly and nice and straight and true into the part so they don't go in crooked. Now we can take our M3 nylon locking nut and using our finger, just press that into the recess in the back of the adjustment knob. No heat required for this process. Next, you're gonna grab the main body and the adjustment knob. With the nylon locking nut facing upwards towards that void, you're gonna insert the adjustment knob into the slot and grab your M3 by 20 socket head cap screw. And you're gonna to begin to thread that through the adjustment knob, which is gonna go through that nylon locking nut. And of course, you're gonna need a key here to do this. And you can just hold on to the adjustment knob here with your fingers and that should be enough to hold it into place while you tighten this thing all the way through. And once you have the M3 screw fully seated, this is what it should look like. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is turn your printer on. You're gonna to wanna to home the Z axis so you have a zero point Z reference. And then you can move the print head up about 50 to 70 millimeters so you have some room to work around the existing Z end stop and you're gonna leave your printer on so it doesn't lose that Z zero reference. With the gantry out of the way, you can now remove the Z end stop bracket and you can remove the limit switch off of that bracket by simply unscrewing those two small screws. Make sure you don't lose these screws because we're gonna turn around and use them right away and we're gonna be installing that limit switch onto the backside of the bumper that we 3D printed. So if you remember, there are two holes on the back side of that bumper and those screws should fit and thread into those holes, no problem. After that, you're gonna need two M3 T-nuts and I'm using these self-retaining T-nuts. I like them because wherever you put them in the aluminum extrusion, they'll sit in the channel and typically stay into place even if the channel is vertical. You don't have to use these. If you just have regular M3 T-nuts, you can use them. Uh, just might be a little more difficult to get them into the channel and hold them into place while you're fastening down these M3 by 10 socket head cap screws. So you can see that I put the socket head cap screws into the holes in the main body and I'm just going to be working around this Z coupler here and there should be more than enough room to do this. Uh, but I'm going to line up those screws with the T-nuts and get the main body fastened down. With those screws snug but not tightened all the way down, you can slide the main body down so that it seats nicely on the metal bracket of the Z stepper motor. So it should sit nice and flat. From there, we can take our bumper and we can install it into the main body. And you'll see the two shapes line up. The zero marker on the bumper is gonna face forward so that you can see it while you're operating the machine. And we're gonna turn the thumb screw 
uh, in the down direction so that it pulls that bumper down and we're going to seat it all the way down to the bottom so as far as it will go downwards. Now you can tell the printer to go to Z0 and the reason that we push the bumper all the way down is to make sure that it doesn't trip the limit switch prematurely. And if you have your nozzle at X0, Y0 on this machine, you shouldn't end up with a nozzle crash uh, because the nozzle is beyond the limits of the print bed. But if you do have your print head sitting somewhere in the middle of your machine, uh, just be careful that if you accidentally hit Z home, uh, the nozzle is not going to come down and crash into your print bed. But since we left our machine on and it should know where Z0 is, you can now adjust the bumper upwards to make contact with the X carriage and this should more or less reset your Z position to zero uh, fairly accurately. Now since we didn't mess with the bed level or anything like that, you shouldn't have to re-level your bed. You may have to move the print head over to the middle of the print bed and use a piece of paper just to dial in that Z position now with your bumper and I like to move things around so that I'm pretty much at that zero marker on the bumper. This is gonna give me a nice reference to work with in the future. So if I change to a filament like PETG, let's say, I can give that Z offset just a little bit of extra space for a filament like PETG that likes a little more space, and then I can move it back down to zero for a filament like PLA, where it doesn't mind being squished so much. And the obvious advantage here is being able to make these micro adjustments with very little frustration. All you have to do is turn the thumb screw. Previously, you would have had to loosen off that metal bracket that held on the limit switch to the extrusion. And as soon as you loosen that thing off, the position is lost and you're gonna be fiddling around with it quite a bit in order to make your Z offset adjustment. In this particular case, it's quick, simple, easy, and you can get right back to printing. So that's it for this video. If you guys happen to have an ANET A8 Plus 3D printer, I did another video in the past where I do a full and comprehensive walkthrough of the build of this printer to show you guys how to get the most out of it. And that includes small upgrades that make a big difference. And I'll put that link in the top right hand corner of the screen right now so you guys can go check that out. Otherwise, in this video, don't forget that all of the design files are in the video description down below. So that'll take you to a Thingiverse page where of course you can download those. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. And if you guys found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel, as of course, that will help with my channel growth. Thanks for watching.